Gage K here for the All Star, and join me right now is Canadian featherweight on the rise, David Moon. David, man, it's been I feel like two, three years since we last spoke. So much to talk about, but the first thing I want to get into is your victory at Octagon 28, first round TKO finish, man. I saw the fight; it was a great performance, pretty flawless, man. Great de takedown defense. Your striking was on point. And after the fight, you were somewhat emotional. What what were the emotions, man? Yeah, I think that was the main thing. It was just a two-year layoff, and um, I don't know. I knew I was fighting a tough guy, and it was uh, uh, getting a fight in featherweight division didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up taking the fight on lightweight. And just a lot of stress built up, but uh, yeah, man, I just I'm just super happy with the performance and uh, and the way it turned out for sure. But it was just the, all the emotion was just. I don't know, just everything in the past two and a half years. Yeah, and and I knew you, I know you were grinding with a lot of the guys at TriStar throughout that time. Just couldn't get fights. Entering that last fight, what were the nerves like? Man, this one was different, bro. Definitely the biggest challenge of uh, my career. Uh, the nerve wise, shit, I was so stressed out this that that fight week, bro, more than ever. Um, you know, going to Czech Republic, I'd never fought there before. Being the away guy, fighting one of their hometown guys. And, and um, yeah, it was just about, uh, like you said, man, Just I got a lot of quality training in that two and a half years that I've been away from competing. And it was just getting my mind focused enough that I could just let it all out. And, and as you said, man, I feel like I did everything that I wanted to do. Um, I mean, aside from all the other tools that I didn't get to show yet, but, you know, my footwork, my striking, my distance, my takedown defense, everything was on point. So yeah, it felt really good to get a victory like that, for sure. When you connected with that first right hand and he wobbled, right? And it was just a clean shot. I thought he was out. Were you surprised he recovered from that? The first one when, yeah. when he was wobbled? Yeah, the first right hand, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I knew he was hurt, bro, but man, yeah, I guess like the commentator said, he just, I guess his wrestling uh, background just kicked in and he just grabbed that single leg and I remember trying to finish him with the elbows, but he kept pulling me, and I was like, fuck, this guy's actually still pretty strong, you know? So I had to calm down, and I heard Spicy from the outside telling me, like, don't go for the fi finish, just defend, defend. You know, got my leg free, circled out, and I just chose that last shot, and it just hit him at the right spot. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, in the post-fight interview, first off, how tall is the dude? You're tall, but the dude that interviewed you in the cage that dude's a giant, man. Yeah. How tall was he? <laughs> yeah, he was a tall guy, man, for sure, man. Probably like six six or something. Yeah. But yeah. You probably never looked up to the dude when you're after a fight inside the cage getting interviewed, right? <laughs> for sure. Exactly. But uh you you mentioned in the post fight interview that you're working on your hands, especially the cross, and you felt like that would be a, a useful weapon, and it was a useful weapon because you finished him with it. Was was that something? Yeah. Was that kind of like a turning point for you? Like you took something from your training and really, really implemented mm -hmm. it in your fight and got the finish. Yeah, um, you know, to be honest, man, I owe a lot of it to the coaches, like my boy Spicely. Um, I've been working with Duffy a lot, Sanchez, and you know, helping out guys like Arnold and and Mursad in their fights uh, during the last two and a half years really just leveled me up, bro. Like, and, you know, I'm learning a lot from everybody. Uh, there's another guy, Mendel, uh, one of the best strikers in the world, in my opinion, bro. Like, you know, I take a little bit from everybody. And if it works for me, my body type and my style, man, I just kind of just take it. And, and yeah, this fight was, like I said, I just wanted to just showcase everything. Um, you know, at least with the hands, yeah, I was able to showcase that right cross that, that uh, I really feel like improved a lot, man. It's one of my go-to weapons now so which yeah, is cool here yeah. for sure and uh <laughs> you fought in some unique locations around the world man it's like you're it's difficult for you to get a fight in canada how was it fighting for octagon oh man they're they're amazing promotion bro honestly one of the best ones i ever fought for when i went to go corner spicely man i was just so impressed and i just wanted to fight so bad and you know they, they kind of were in the beginning, a little bit um, hesitant because obviously I'm just uh, you know, not really much of a name for myself. I'm from Canada and stuff and gave me a shot, man. And, and 
and it kind of just worked out my in my favor. So yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, the full. Yeah. So are you signed to Octagon or are you looking for opportunities elsewhere at this moment? Um, for now, yeah, I think I'm going to be signing with Octagon. Uh, the next we're in talk right now is a is a December fourth matchup for featherweight. Okay, so you're gonna go back down to featherweight. You didn't you didn't enjoy the lightweight life, bro. It's just you know I don't I think I could do it, but it's just too easy of a cut. I mean, on fight day, I walked in at 161 and a half pounds, bro. Like I I, I should have been eating more on on that day, but I took a lot of time like getting my sleep back. The jet lag was crazy. Um. So yeah, man, I think featherweight's the right right place for me for sure. Will you and uh Spice Lee be on the same card? Are you guys trying to do that? Um, I don't think we're going to do that again, bro. That was too stressful, man. Um, you know, both of us fighting, it's just, uh, it was just such a, yeah. oh my God, I didn't even mention that when you asked me, like, how was the stress? But, like, yeah, it was stressful, bro. Just seeing your boy fight before or after, and you know you're going to go in after that. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just too much for me. I did not like that, and I don't think we're going to be doing that again for sure. All right, that sounds good, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think a lot of, fighters teammates friends you know it's hard for them because when you're fighting it's just you but when you watch someone you care about fight the emotions are yeah. completely different and that could affect you when you enter the the cage like 15 minutes later that's just wild oh true you know to be honest i owe a lot of the success this fight leading up to it all to my boy spicely i mean even uh given the the whole situation he came and just Look me directly like in my face and he just told me like listen just focus on like your shit and that's it you know and he just said all the right things to just keep me focused at the right times and even inside the flight bro like i could hear him so clearly every single instruction and yeah it was just perfect so i owe, I owe a lot of the, a lot of the the reasons of this fight being as successful as it was to the to my boy spice so with this octagon situation are you signed with a, a new management company or what's going on with that side of the business? Yeah, I'm going to be, I guess at this point I'll be signing with Ruby, but Spicy will actually be managing me for the time being. So for the next few fights under the Ruby management, uh, uh, yeah, Spicy is going to be handling me until I, I guess, move up the rankings or get signed to a, a, another promotion that, that might be bigger or something like that. Well, the positive is that, you know, you returned, you got the win, and then you're also sitting on a four-fight win streak. So another two wins, that could put you on on the radar to all the promotions out in the world. You know, the UFC, Bellator, PFL, you know what I mean? PFL would be a huge opportunity, right? Like $1 million tournament, that's that's pretty insane. Yeah, that is, man. No, I agree, bro. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to keep on performing bro and just keep on getting finishes um i feel like right now is the time i've been you know in this sport for 10 years now just you know i've had some downs i've had a lot of ups and i learned and i progressed you know i feel like i'm in my prime or coming into it right now so yeah i feel like i'm ready bro like i'm excited to go back down to featherweight and <clears throat> i really want to make my mark in this division and like you said get another couple more finishes and, and yeah i'm excited to see what's next you had you know, some injuries throughout your career and the last two years of inactivity, you're still training, but you're inactive as in competition. Did it allow you to kind of heal everything? And that's why entering that last fight, you, you did you have anything wrong with you? You know, of course you have little knickknacks, but you know, nothing serious. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, I've been training throughout, like literally, uh, the whole time, bro. I, I don't think I I take taking a break, break. You know, like, um, yeah. I mean, just training smart though, because it's not a fight camp or anything. Just if I have a little injury, like you were mentioning, I just take a few days off, and I was being smart about it. But yes, when I came into this fight, man, I was, I, I've never been this healthy. I had, you know, my ACL done like two years ago. I came back from it, and I, I was able to do that, everything without any pain in my joints and stuff like that. So yeah, it was very good. Going through that stressful situation, did you feel like uh, maybe you went like went over a mental hump? You know what I mean? Because you, physically you're ready. You've been training for years, basically for this fight, and you went in there and you performed phenomenally. I think honestly, man, like I said, it was just that the last two years because of you know the COVID, 
you know, TriStar is the main gym and there's a lot of guys coming in and out, but because of the whole situation, man, it was just whoever was in Montreal. But luckily for me, you know, there was a lot of guys in, in my weight class and, and in the lightweight division. So, yeah, I got so good just training with them, but helping them out with camps, all the sparring we did. Um, yeah, that definitely was a big key in, in the performance that I put on this past five years. What is the situation with TriStar right now? Because I noticed that in the past few years during the COVID era that guys have left and went stateside to train. So I was thinking that TriStar was closed, but actually it's not. You guys have been training. Um, well, it's been closed, but, you know, fighters have been getting together at, like, sometimes outside, sometimes at other smaller gyms and stuff like that, getting by. But um, a lot of the pro guys, especially the UFC guys, Bellator guys, they, they've been having fights throughout consistently. So you know, they were having, like, their own you know, private trainings with only, like, three or four people, which was the, the maximum of the, of the law of Quebec, Canada, you know, so... It was like that, bro. I mean, it just recently just kind of opened its doors to the public, maybe like three months ago or something like that. Yeah, Canada did have some like wild restrictions, man. You couldn't even leave the the province to go to another province, and then if you come back, you have to do quarantines and stuff. Seriously, and you have to get double vaccinated to travel to the next province, like like right next door. It's crazy, bro. Like it makes no sense, man. Like whatever like i'm not i'm not gonna get into all the vaccine stuff like but for me personally i'm, I'm just not gonna get it because i just don't want to and yeah it's just crazy that they're putting all these restrictions just to go over to the yeah you know just across the country and you know it just makes no sense there. yeah so you know you let's just go back into that two years of of training and 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 being involved in other camps man and you mentioned that you you've grown so much where do you feel like you've grown the most and who has like added more to your arsenal compared to others? I've grown the most with um, my striking for sure. I mean, I think I always was like a striker at heart, but now it's like, uh, yeah, I definitely reached like a level that, that I, you know, I've only been in this level for like probably the past year and a half, you know, where um, everything just seems to be coming together real nice. And, you know, this past octagon fight, I was only able to showcase my boxing with my, with my striking, but, Man, I got kicks and knees and elbows and and yeah, it's just all coming out, blending real nice, man. So striking for sure. Uh, second thing would would be the um, the defense, bro. Uh, the cage wrestling defense, because I mean, you got so many killers at TriStar, and of course, I'm using my best tools. These guys are using my best, their best tools, and they're exposing my weakness by putting me on the cage and putting the pressure on with the wrestling and. It was hell, but I grinded and I kept on putting myself through that. And uh, that's been my second biggest improvement, just being able to defend myself there and get out of there and be able to utilize my best weapon, which is my strike. What's your situation now? Are you in camp helping someone else right now or are you just training every day? Uh, after the fight, I had a dislocated thumb. So I took a couple of weeks off. I just started my first day of training now. And... Um, there's no opponent yet, but the plan is to fight on December 4th uh, in Octagon again. So I'm just starting starting now, man. But I mean, I've, I've stayed in shape and I was still training with the injury, just doing jiu-jitsu, no striking and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm just transitioning, just picking up the pace a little bit more now. All right. Well, if you do get an opponent on December 4th, we will chat again, talk about the matchup, maybe get Spicely on here to do a little, give yeah. a couple words and... Uh, sure. And uh, catch up again, man. Thank you, David, man, for the time. And uh, good luck, man. You're all smiles, man. It's good to see that. Yeah, appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. All right. <laughs>